okay this course is about advanced mechanics of solids now in the better name for this course would be theory of elasticity but in few universities this course is offered with the name advanced mechanics of solids now when we say this term elasticity we know that elasticity is nothing but the absence of the permanent deformation in any material say engineering material or non engineering material but if there is absence of permanent deformation then we call those kind of behavior as elastic behavior and if there is suppose say permanent deformation which is observed in a material then those that kind of behavior can be called as a plastic behavior or plasticity but this course is all about theory of elasticity and when we say this course is about theory of elasticity then that means if i if if i draw the if i draw the uh, stress strain curve if i draw the stress strain curve then we know that a typical metal behavior of a typical metal will be somewhat like this wherein up to this point the uh, there will be there will be a linear relation between stress and strain and up to this point if we release the load then the material should regain its shape and size so elastic behavior of the material can be observed up to this point which is called as yield point hence our study will be only till till this region from here to here in this course theory of elasticity and of course if you want to study uh, more about the materials in this zone then there is one more course called as theory of plasticity now before st actually starting with this course let us see a brief history of this course from where this uh, from when actually people started working on this uh, area that is elasticity or from where actually it started we all know this person right so elasticity has been developed following the great achievements of newton in stating the laws of motion although it has earlier roots now if you observe the sketch book or the notebook of leonardo da vinci uh, you may observe that he had he had a, he had sketched in his notebooks a possible test for tensile strength of wire during his days and uh, this is very long back if i if you observe this date right and then also galileo galilei what he did was galileo had investigated the breaking load of rods under tension and concluded that the load was independent of length and proportional to the cross sectional area and let me remind you that this be is the first step towards the concept of stress he was the person and look 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 at this date so with, and in between this he had somewhere here somewhere in early early 1600 he discovered that the load in the uh, rods and which was under tension was independent of length and was proportional to the cross sectional area of a rod all right so this is from this is where the concept of stress was started but but what actually motivated people to undertake this study of elasticity was that they wanted to understand and control the fracture of solid so that is what motivated all these people to study the elasticity we know that every engineering material possesses a certain extent of elasticity right it it possesses certain extent of elasticity but the common engineering material would remain elastic only for a very small strain before actually it start starts exhibiting plastic straining or brittle or or fracture here at this point however natural polymeric material shows elasticity over a wider range and then the widespread use of natural rubbers and similar materials motivated the development of finite elasticity the roots of this subject may be traced uh, in the work of say uh, george green or gabrio piola or kirchhoff but actually the theory of elasticity as such it started in early 1820s wherein uh, the initially the three dimensional uh, elasticity theory was developed by koshi in early uh, 1820s and then navier developed an elasticity theory based on simple particle model but later it was gradually realized by the work by the combined work of by the work of koshi and navier and poisson that 
this particle theory was not that sufficient to capture almost all kind of elasticity problem and that is where and that is where uh, continuum theory started and, and took over the particle theory around 18 in 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 1837 george green highlighted about the maximum possible number of independent elastic moduli in most general and isotropic material he pointed out that the existence of an elastic strain energy required at least at least 21 independent constant out of the 36 independent constants to relate to relate stresses to relate stresses with that of with that of strain he said that out of out of 36 independent constants we require at least 21 independent constants to relate stresses with that of strains around 1855 Lord Kelvin showed that a strain energy function must exist for adiabatic responses and showed that temperature changes are associated with elastic deformation, in fact with adiabatic elastic deformation. The middle and late 1800s were a period in which many basic elastic solutions were derived and applied to technology and to explanation of natural phenomena. Now one of the scientists who extensively contributed to this theory of elasticity is Saint Vanant. He derived the solution for a torsion of non-circular cylinder and this was um, really a breakthrough in which he explained the necessity of warping displacement function warping warping displacement warping displacement function and this helped to solve uh, many torsional and um, transverse loading beam problem and because of this findings of Saint Venant uh, this findings help Bernoulli, Euler and Coulomb here Bernoulli, Euler and Coulomb in understanding of approximations inherent in the simple beam theory and that is how they come up came up with the Euler Bernoulli beam theory uh, for which they took the help of uh, St. Benon's findings. So this led to the development basically of the Euler Bernoulli beam theory and then Timo Shinko developed now in in recent years timo shinko also developed beam theory and contributed well in the recent year however the development of viable theory with forms of stress strain relationship for specific rubbery elastic materials as well as an understanding of physical effects of the non linearity in simple problems such as torsion and bending was mainly the achievement of this british born engineer and applied mathematician roland rilvein in 19 in 1940s and 1950s so this is what we can say a brief history of theory of elasticity of course many other people like rudolf hertz and all have contributed to this subject but if i if we if someone asks oh, who were the main contributors of for to develop this theory of elasticity you can obviously name this some of these very important notable persons all right and then after this before now actually going into the theory of elasticity let us see what are the assumptions on which this entire theory is based on in order to evaluate stresses strain and displacement in any elasticity problem one needs to derive series of basic equations and boundary conditions this you all might be knowing from your uh, mechanics of solid subject that we have to derive the basic equations like governing equations as well as some boundary conditions right governing uh, governing equations as well as boundary conditions but now during the process of deriving these equations if one considers if one considers all the influential factors the results obtained will be so complicated and hence practically no solution will be found and because of this what we may do is we may uh, therefore consider some basic assumptions to arrive a possible solution now under under such assumptions under such assumptions what we can do is we can neglect some of the influential factors of minor importance all right we can obviously neglect some of the influential factors of just of minor importance and these are the assumptions on which this theory of elasticity has been developed now what this first assumption says is a body is continuous now what does this mean is now suppose say if we have some body then what we are assuming is there are no voids as such 
there are no small small voids in between and it is a continuous body it is a continuous body which is which is filled with continuous matter all right and only under this assumption the physical quantities in the body such as strains such as such as strains such as strain stress displacement be continuously distributed and the theory expressed by continuous function of coordinates in space and you might think that this assumption might give end up giving us some error that is true if the body is small but if the body is very large compared to this small small voids then hardly this uh, assumption will contribute to any significant error so this will be our first assumption the second assumption is that the body is perfectly elastic this means that the body which is considered obeys the hooke's law of elasticity that is strain is proportional to uh, i mean the stress is proportional to strain in this in this elastic region all right so we will be will be we will be considering that the body is perfectly elastic elastic basically we will be restricting our study only till this point and therefore we can very well assume that the body is perfectly elastic and it is it is under this assumption that elastic constants will be elastic constants will be independent of stresses and strains the third assumption which we will um, consider is the body is homogeneous now what do you mean by body is homogeneous that is the properties are same throughout the body therefore if we consider any general three dimensional body and say if we do the study on one small point if we do the study on some small point then whatever results we obtain at this point it will be it will be it will be valid over the entire body and that is because we are we have assumed that a body is homogeneous the fourth assumption will be the body is isotropic now this means that the properties will be same in all the direction so properties will be independent of the direction for a given frame of reference so this is what is our fourth assumption that the body is isotropic and our fifth and last assumption will be the displacements and strains are small now this is again a very important assumption with this what what we will do under this assumption is let us say before de before the deformation let the diagonal length or any let the diagonal length be this much and let us say after after deformation let the let the length let the length changes to this fine but since the displacement and strains are small what we will say is that this length the length which is after deformation is approximately equal to the original diagonal length all right and this can be done only because we are assuming that the displacement and strains will be very small in case of linear elasticity similarly uh, with this assumption what we will be doing is we know that strain is given by change in length by original length and then this is the first term but if we make the square of this term then since our stresses uh, our displacements and strains are very small this product of this small terms will we can we will be neglecting straight away because our assumption is the displacement and strains are very small so the square of the small quantity will be further it will be a very small quantity and all these higher order terms will be straight away neglecting in case of theory of elasticity so these are the most important assumptions on which this entire theory has been developed now let us see where we can use this linear elasticity the very purpose of this linear elasticity or theory of elasticity is to analyze stresses and displacement of elements within the elastic range and thereby to check the sufficiency of the of of their strength stiffness and stability this is what we all know from even from our mechanics of solid subject all right but if i consider solid mechanics as such solid mechanics as such then it broadly it solid mechanics as such then it broadly has three branches one is our mechanics of solid cores or mechanic msol cores or mechanics of material it is one and the same then we can have one more branch called as structural mechanics and the third branch is what we'll be studying in this course that is theory of elasticity theory of elasticity poe theory of elasticity 
if you remember in case of mechanics of solids or mechanics of material this subject deals essentially with the stresses and displacement of a structural or machine element which are only with the shape of say bar or say beam or say column or very simple subjects which is subjected to only this simple loads like tension compression shear bending or torsion and nothing more complicated than this was considered while studying this course mechanics of material whereas what they do in structural mechanics is that on the basis of mechanics of material this subject deals with the stresses and displacement of a structure in the form of bar system say let us say truss or rigid frame so so what basically is done in this subject is that the some simple shapes which was studied individually in mechanics of material out of those simple shapes a structure is formed and those structures are analyzed in this course which is called as structural mechanics then what about theory of elasticity or advanced mechanics of solid what we will do as we know the structural elements which are in the form of simple shapes like bar and beams are analyzed in mechanics of material but what about the structural elements that are not in the form of bar such as blocks plates shells dams and foundation and or or any complicated uh, machines or a vehicle body now those kind of complicated geometries for a very complicated loads and not as not as a simple load as this can be analyzed only by using theory of elasticity and not by our mechanics of material or mechanics of solid or structural mechanics approach it is not possible we may be able to analyze somewhat using this approaches but the error which we will uh, we will get will get up ending very high error all right and in fact some problems will not at all be possible to solve using using this approach of mechanics of solid and forget about this complicated uh, shapes like blocks and plates and shells even if you want to analyze a bar very precisely then also this approach what we had studied in mechanics of material is not sufficient and with a careful study of this um, uh course that is theory of elasticity you will realize that this is the proper way or proper approach theory of elasticity or advanced mechanics of solid is the proper approach even to study a bar in depth so although we have studied uh beams in this course mechanics of material we will be studying beams again in this course that is theory of elasticity and then with the careful study you will realize that if you remember in case of beams right in case of beams in case of beams if suppose say this beam is beam is subjected to some load here this side then we know that the top layer is under compression and the bottom layer is under tension and there will be one neutral axis wherein there will be no stresses and then we were nicely plotting this linear distribution of stress along the cross section right here is where we were saying that the stresses are zero this is under compression which is which is negative and then this is under tension which is positive and so on basically what we were trying to do is we were saying that the bending stresses are linearly distributed and this was what the results we were getting in mecha uh, in mechanics of solid subject because we were assuming we were we, ha we were had assumed one big assumption we had considered one big assumption and that assumption was the planes remain plane even after bending but let me tell you in 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 actual practice the planes do not remain plane after bending and this assumption we will no more consider in this theory of elasticity so we can will be easily be able to check the distrib actual distribution of the stresses in the beam in this course that is theory of elasticity and as i had told you all in order to analyze the bar element thoroughly and very precisely it is necessary to apply theory of elasticity or advanced mechanics of solid approach so basically what this subject advanced mechanics of solid or theory of elasticity contains is it contains equilibrium equations relating to stresses then it contains kinematic equation relating strains and displacement then it has constitutive equations relating stresses and strains 
and then boundary condition relating physical domains and finally it will have uniqueness constraint relating the applicable applicability of the solutions so this is what all we will be studying in this course advanced mechanics of solid advanced mechanics of solid or theory of elasticity